Hello and welcome back to Pillow Talk Radio. <laughs> oh, that feels good to say. You guys, first of all, thank you so much for all of the feedback and encouragement and messages regarding the last episode. It truly means so much to me and I love getting your feedback and feeling like we're in a conversation together. So truly, thank you and thank you for listening. Now let me set the scene for you. I am currently in my pink office slash creative studio atop my pink velvet couch. You know the one. Atop a sea of squishmallows. You know the ones. Their names, by the way, are Hank, Juniper, Lammy, and Diablo. I'm wearing my furry pink coat. You know the one. And I am speaking into my tiny pink mic. And yes, you know the one. So yeah, I like pink. That's where we are. That's the moment. That's the vibe. A little bit of housekeeping to start. As I mentioned in the last episode, I am going to be incrementally inviting you into the different pathways that you can take to enter my world, to go deeper into my ecosystem. So today at the end of the episode, I will be inviting you into the love life dating relationship pathway. And in the next three episodes, I will be inviting you into other pathways. Next, at the end of the last episode, I whetted our appetite for Benjamin. We're going to have to savor our anticipation just a little bit longer because that episode will be coming up. But today, it's just going to be you, me, and the Squishmallows. In our episode today, we are going to traverse some well-trodden territory. Our topic for today is sexy synergy, freedom, commitment, and the anatomy of a healthy relationship. My intention is to lay the groundwork for a shared language around romantic relationships and to invite you into my relationship philosophies. As always, this will connect to other realms in my ecosystem because as we've covered it's all connected so relax be available for hearing something that lands in a way that it hasn't before i have really found that the breakthrough is often in the subtlety now let's explore what is a healthy relationship and i told you i'd say it again the Number one predictor of happiness is the quality of our relationships. So there's also substantial research that one of the primary stressors is intimate relationship dysfunction. Relationship stress can really, really wear on us. Conversely, positive, healthy, functional relationships significantly reduce our stress and bolster our well-being. So I think it's worth noting directly that when we talk about well-being and when we talk about health holistically on an individual level and on a societal level, relational health and social health, this is paramount for a fulfilling life. And what we are going to look at today in a greater sense is the synergy between personal health and relationship health. So the first conceptual piece I want to align on together is that relationships are living organisms. And much like other living organisms, like us, relationships have specific needs and they require specific high quality fuel in order to thrive. A relationship is dynamic, right? It is literally a dynamic and inherent within the word dynamic is movement, is change and evolution. It is a living organism. And what this means is that as one of the primary constituents in the anatomy of a living relationship, we have a lot of agency 
we have a lot of influence in the nature of the dynamic. What I hope this emphasizes for you is hope and empowerment. If you currently are in a relationship, and by the way, the, our conversation today, we're going to be speaking through the context of romantic partnerships. However, much of what we talk about applies to any sort of relationship. But anyway, if you currently are in a relationship that feels stagnant, that feels dysfunctional and or frustrating, stressful, toxic even, know that much like a person, the living organism that is the relationship, just because it is not currently healthy does not mean it cannot come back into health or come into health perhaps for the first time. The potential is there and whether or not that potential for health actualizes, whether or not we show up in our part to actualize that, whether or not the other person shows up to actualize that, whether or not circumstances rearrange to help us actualize that, the potential is there. And I want to name this because I feel like what I observe in the rhetoric is there is a lot of eagerness to label relationships or people in really static terms. This relationship is toxic. This, rela this person is toxic. What I find actually opens up a lot more freedom and space for actualizing that potential of health and for remembering the alive nature of relationships is to see, okay, this behavior is toxic. This repeated pattern is dysfunctional. This dynamic between us is not working. And or it could be this person is not healthy. But do you feel the difference in that? How similar to a person who is sick, right? Whether that is physically ill, mentally ill, that illness in one form or another is a symptom of something being out of balance, some fundamental need or needs not being adequately satisfied or met. When a relationship is dysfunctional or unhealthy, it is causing harm to one or both of the people involved, there's a breakdown in the system somewhere. Fundamental needs that have gone chronically unmet. Similar to a human body or a human psyche, there, there's some sort of unhealthy input. And similar to a human body or a human psyche, just because the current status is unwell does not mean in absolute terms that the relationship cannot be brought back into health. Similar to a human body or a human psyche, when we know, okay, what are the ingredients? What, what is the fuel, the stimulation? What is the movement? Like, what does my body need to be healthy? What does my mind, my spirit, my emotional self need to be healthy? Well, by golly, it's a hell of a lot easier to feed, to act, to take an active role in nurturing our own health. It's the same with relationships. So that's why this matters to take the time to understand there's so much noise about this is toxic, that's a blah, blah, red flag, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, okay, but what is a healthy relationship? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the ingredients? What are like, what are the variables that I, you, and we get to nurture so that our relationship is healthy, knowing that when our relationship is healthy, that bolsters my health, that bolsters your health. And when it's not, that drains my well-being, that drains your well-being. And this is a big reason why I feel so passionately about the value of the relationship work that I do with people is because this is 
such, such an essential, hugely influential area of our lives that most people learn very unconsciously and haphazardly through just kind of picking up pieces of distorted data here and there over a lifetime, right? And so it is such a act of generosity. It is such an act of self-love towards yourself to take the time with clarity and consciousness of mind to understand how to have healthy relationships. And it is such an act of generosity to anyone that you are in relationship with. What's also worth noting is that we learn relationships relationally. We learn what it is to be in relationship, to relate with other people, relating to other people. And we all have different things modeled to us at varying levels of function and health. Not just modeled to us, but instilled in us through being taught certain patterns of behavior relationally. It is so worth it to get curious about whatever we have internalized unconsciously by osmosis as normal when it comes to relationships. Whatever we've internalized of this is how relationships are. Because let's be honest, a hell of a lot of ideas about relationships get normalized that really aren't good for anyone. And what's beautiful about an intimate relationship too is that each one is unique to the individuals. Each relationship is a culture of two. What matters is the relationship functions for all parties involved. That may look different couple to couple. The mechanisms at play in any functional, healthy relationship are the same on a fundamental level. Let's look at an example of this. So any couple, any two people who have a committed romantic relationship with each other are going to have some mutually agreed upon understanding and set of boundaries, agreed upon behaviors when it comes to the reality that just because you are in a relationship with, with each other does not mean that every other attractive person in the world ceases to exist or ceases to be attractive. The world is teeming with hotties and we all have a choice around how we navigate ourselves around this in relationship. So for one pair, the mutual agreement could be, okay, do whatever you want, but tell me first and wear a condom. You know what I'm saying? For another, it could be like, you know, enjoy a little flirty energy out in the world, but be transparent about the fact that you have a partner from the get-go and nothing goes into physical territory, right? Another couple might be like, okay, we both mutually agree and feel good about having a boundary around one-on-one -on -one time with male, female friends, whatever. That's kind of more in the hetero context. The point is that while the content, the, the specifications of the mutual agreement are going to be different, you know, couple to couple, and I'm speaking, of course, in terms of like the structure of partners and couples, there are obviously more <laughs> possible variations, but that that's what we're talking about today. The mechanism of mutual agreement and boundaries that work for everyone involved are in place around how we agree with respect to our relationship to navigate ourselves individually around the reality that the world is teeming with hotties. So the visual that I want to bring in to understand a healthy relationship in the simplest of terms is a Venn diagram. There are three circles overlapping, me, you, us. Those are the three entities. And in a healthy relationship, there is a free-flowing feedback loop of energy between these three entities, me, you, and us. 
My friend Theora Mensch used the term a few years ago that really stuck with me, a regenerative font. So imagine the flow of energy between these three entities on the Venn diagram as a regenerative font, meaning that as I feed nurturing energy to the relationship the relationship as its own entity its own living organism feeds energy to you as an individual you as an individual feed energy to the relationship as an entity the relationship as an entity feeds energy and nurtures me as an individual me as an individual i nurture you as an individual and thereby nurture the entity of us the relationship the living organism in a synergistic mutually appreciating and exponentially expanding regenerative font are you picking up what i'm putting down here there's a lot of nuance here that we don't have time to discuss today, but I certainly discuss in depth inside of Magnetics Love School. A another way we can think about it is that this third living entity that is the relationship is an asset. It's an asset that appreciates the more we appreciate it. As I support that asset, as I appreciate, which literally means to increase in value right the more that i nurture value and appreciate the us the more that the us appreciates and value and the more value it brings to my life the more it supports me individually and the more it supports you individually a relationship is not healthy not functioning where there is some sort of block there is some sort of imbalance in how the energy flows through these three entities and or the energy input are we investing are we nurturing the relationship are we nurturing ourselves and or some sort of block in how the energy flows out right are are we receiving so things could all be flowing but if if someone will not receive the love <laughs> There's a block in the energy outflow. This is a visual energetic dynamic framework to understand where we can make adjustments to the health of a relationship. A relationship that is very codependent and enmeshed, for example, would be one where the entity of me and the entity of you have been absorbed into the entity of us. I've lost myself. You've lost yourself. There's an imbalance. And what happens there with the lack of energy flow is the relationship the relationship can really stagnate. It can become stifling, all-consuming because we are literally consumed by it. And what can happen too is because there is not fresh input through the channel of me through the channel of you because we're no longer prioritizing me or you we're all consumed by the relationship it can begin to really stifle attraction which esther perel talks about in mating in captivity i love that book she talks about the the dynamic duality in a committed monogamous relationship between the domesticity, the intimacy, the togetherness, and the safety in that, and the attraction that exists in the separation and the space between us and the longing and the individuation and the ways that we are different. I talk about this a lot that that, that individuation and this is language from my from Diana, my therapist slash fairy godmother, merging and individuation. Our individuality, our separateness, the, our our space from each other breathes life into the quality of the merging, the time together. So where there is not breath breathed through space in individuation and individuality, where we are consumed by the us, we're literally stifling the breath, the life flow of a healthy relationship. 
So in contrast to this, let's take, for example, imagine two musical artists who are constantly touring. There is a a big emphasis on the me. There is a big emphasis on the you. And let's say schedules are crazy. They haven't seen each other in like four or five months. They maybe get two nights together in Madrid. In that example, we're seeing that the us is not being properly nurtured. And so the pulse of the us, the lifeblood of the us diminishes another example there could be a relationship dynamic where one person is catered to disproportionately to the other so there is a there is energy going into you there is energy going into us but there is not a healthy blood flow breath of life going into the me that's not going to work in the long term. I don't know if you can hear Perlis squeaking around with her toy in the back. <laughs> Wherever this is not flowing properly, there's pools of energy stagnating. There is a current that is cut off, whatever it is. It's going to reach a tipping point at some point. As we were talking about in the last episode, things build up cumulatively. And we either tough them out, limp along, being miserable, barely surviving off of like a little trickle of water, or we reach a breaking point. Someone reaches a breaking point. The relationship reaches a breaking point. It may take a while to happen, but it's going to happen. So feeling into this framework, I want you to reflect on a romantic partnership, maybe that you're currently in or that you have been in the past. What are you barking about? Okay, hang on. I have to let her out. Can you notice what might be happening where there was an imbalance or a block in the energy flow where if it's a current situation there is an opportunity for an adjustment so this really brings us to a point of emphasizing the importance of maintaining and nurturing a connection with yourself within the context of a relationship now There's a bigger conversation here around connection and interdependence and collectivism, individualism. There's different cultural lenses to this. I'm obviously American from a a hyper individualistic culture, but what I want to offer is actually an invitation to see the potential synergy in the, in the relating and the connection between an individual and a, a social entity, a social structure that extends beyond that individual, whether that is the culture of two in a partnership, whether that is in a family structure, whether that is in a community structure. It is not mutually exclusive in my view. And in fact, it is a synergistic relationship. It is an ecosystem wherein when I nurture my the health of myself, the health of my spirit individually, I am then able to contribute to the health of social social structures that I participate in beyond myself. And when other people are doing the same, the health of the partnership, the health of the nuclear family, the health of the community at large, the health of the friend group grows. And then that social entity is able to contribute to the health of me as an individual, of you as as an individual. It's a synergistic ecosystem. And there's so many different facets of this, but what I really want to emphasize today and what I really observe and notice in terms of a lot of people's desire, very genuine desire for love to merge, (laughs) to be in fusion with another person or to be in belonging with a certain social group, that merging is delicious and we get to have it. And I want us to recognize that our ability to be with ourselves, to to regulate with ourselves, to have a healthy sense of self is actually an essential part of the equation. And I honestly think way too many people in 
partnerships in love stop nurturing their individuality not just their individuality but all of the other intimate relationships in their lives that contribute to their social health their spiritual well-being we project way too much expectation pressure onto a partnership to fulfill us and a partnership a relationship absolutely gets to be a huge huge source of fulfillment meaning purpose and that actually gets to happen in in a healthier way when we are taking accountability for how we are nurturing ourselves and the entire ecosystem around us in such a way where we're able to bring that energy we receive from all of these multiple sources and invest that into our relationship and then we get to receive from the health of the relationship and bring that out into the world there's so much i have to say about this and i do inside of magnetics love school but we, we've scratched the surface today. There are a couple other things that I want to name before we close out. And that is on this line that we're tugging right now around the importance of nurturing your relationship with yourself and everything that feeds your spirit individually, how that nurtures the health of the relationship. It's actually in service of the relationship. And we're emphasizing how removing the pressure and the expectation for your relationship and your partner to be everything for you, it stifles the relationship. It's not good for the health of the relationship. As we're tugging at this thread, I wanna emphasize another visual that we can that can help us understand and kind of um, take inventory around the health of a relationship and that is the space and the freedom for a full range of individual expression within the context of a relationship so what i mean by that is that within your relationship there is space for you to be expressed in your smallness, in your vulnerability, and, and doubt that comes up. There is also space for you to be expressed in your bigness, in your feeling yourself, in your confidence, in your power. There is space for you to be expressed in your full range of dimensionality. We're not hiding. We're not contorting ourselves to appear a certain way in order to be accepted by our partner. We are being accepted and we are being given full range to full freedom to be a multi-dimensional, ever-evolving, exploding being. And yes, there is accountability. Yes, there is witnessing. No, we don't have to fully meet and connect with each other on every single facet interest dimension. We're two different people and we can be met by others outside of our relationship on certain facets, interests, whatever. Again, it's removing the pressure and the expectation to be everything for each other. That actually opens up a lot of freedom within the context of commitment. This is where some people fear commitment because they equate it to meaning my freedom is cut off. And while yes, it is a different experience to have someone else, a literal significant other in the equation to consider when it comes to your life choices and how you t conduct yourself in a world teeming with hotties and what you mutually agree upon as parameters and boundaries that honor your relationship and contribute to you both feeling safe in the merging, special in the merging. A healthy relationship is one in which you get to feel free, free to express yourself and be accepted in your full range of dimensionality.
freedom and support along the way as you grow and explore and evolve individually and as a couple. And when we have a healthy, nurtured sense of self, we're not so threatened by difference in our partner. We're not so threatened by moments of disconnect that are inevitable with two different people. We're not so threatened by our partner expressing and exploring dimensions of themselves that we don't necessarily fully understand, but we can accept and appreciate and allow the space for. So finally, I want to name one more thing in the room before we bring it home here. <laughs> I don't know if any of you watch Outer Banks. I love watching Outer Banks. I'm, I just, I was like, bring it on home, John B. Anyway, Chase Stokes, what a hottie. So there's a lot of talk in regards to healthy relationships around attachment style. And while I think that many things can be very helpful as frameworks and contexts for better understanding our own behaviors and other people's behaviors, namely unconscious behaviors, what we're really talking about when we talk about secure attachment and secure relational behaviors is regulation. The ability to self-regulate when someone is behaving in a quote avoidant anxious style. What we're really talking about is they're, they're dysregulated around the relationship. Meaning, for example, if, if someone is feeling really anxious and that's manifesting in a lot of need for closeness and contact with their partner in a way that maybe might feel smothering for their partner. What that person is seeking is regulation through the merging, through the togetherness of contact with the partner. And this is a, this is a much bigger conversation. But anyway, when we're looking at someone who we would name as having a secure attachment style, what does that mean? It means that their relational behaviors are regulated. They're not erratic, imbalanced. They're coming from a place of being able to individuate with themselves, to self-regulate. It's like, okay, I, I'm dating someone. I haven't I got a text from them. Yeah, maybe I'm feeling a little anxious, but I'm not going to call them seven times because I can regulate myself with this uncertainty. I can sit with it. I can be like, okay, maybe who knows what's going on, but no matter what, I'm going to be okay. So where we want to have healthier, more grounded relationships, we get to focus on regulating ourselves, regulating our really learning to regulate our relational behaviors, how we literally act in relation to others, the way that we communicate and the decisions that we make. And it just so happens that these regulated relational behaviors that stem from a place of groundedness with ourselves, that stem from a place of valuing ourselves, that stem from a place of desire to connect with the other person rather than I need you, I need you, I need you in order to be okay. These happen to be the very same behaviors that generate the most attraction. Simply speaking, there's nuance to that, but these happen to be the very behaviors that allow the most space for attraction, for the lingering space of desire and anticipation between me and you. These happen to be the very same behaviors that allow you to build, enjoy, sustain, and evolve satisfying relationships that are good for me, they're good for you, and they're good for us. Us, the entity created between me and you, and us collectively at large. Because the more healthy relationships we see, the better. It creates a ripple effect out in the world. So yes, 
We have just barely scratched the surface here, but I hope there was something in here for you that landed, that struck a chord. To summarize, we talked about relationships as a living organism, movement being inherent within dynamics. We talked about the regenerative font of synergy and energy flow between me, you, us, the entity between you and me, and us collectively. We touched on synergy between commitment and freedom and the importance of a culture and a context within our relationship that allows us to be fully expressed that allows each individual to be fully expressed and we touched on the importance of self-regulation that translating into regulated relational behaviors that really being what we're talking about when we talk about secure attachment and those behaviors setting the stage for more attraction more fulfillment and more health in our individual expression and in our relationships we talked about this all in conceptual terms so what does this mean in reality what does this mean what does this look like in the day-to-day -day? what does this look like in our morning encounter with our partner what does this look like on a first date what does this look like what does this feel like in the bedroom that is what we learn together inside of Magnetics Love School. Magnetics Love School is my signature love life accelerator. It is my community and learning space for social and romantic fulfillment. If falling in love, building a relationship, finding a partner, and building not just any relationship, but a deeply healthy and satisfying relationship, Magnetics Love School is the place for you to be. This is the place for you to understand on a deep, lasting level what a healthy relationship looks like, feels like, and how you can participate in creating one. Personal empowerment through the context of dating and relationships. We experience upgrades in our love life when our own romantic behaviors and our own self-esteem and our own internal emotional mindset, energetic skill set matches the quality of the relationships that we seek. And so inside of Magnetics Love School, we do the inner work. I like to call it the inner play. We do the inner play to become the match in our behaviors, in our energy, in our self-concept, in our mindset, in our emotional regulation and intelligence. We become the match for the relationship we want and the beautiful byproduct is in the process. We attract the person who is the match for that. In this space, we view dating and relating as a playground for personal growth and personal expression. And as I said, this is about, this is lasting behavioral change. This is about lasting and sustainable upgrades. It comes to how you approach relationships, how you do relationships, and thereby the energy, the fuel, the satisfaction you receive from relationships. I told you I'd say it again. The number one predictor of happiness is the quality of our relationships. Emphasis on the quality. Where is their quality? What creates quality? Well, what we scratch the surface with today, those are the foundational pieces. Those pieces in practice are the foundation. So how does Magnetics Love School work? Magnetics Love School is structured and designed as a membership for ongoing learning and support because again, we're about lasting upgrades. What we know is that real change takes time. It, it requires integrating new behaviors, new perspectives fully through repetition and exposure. 
And research shows that humans learn best and retain new behaviors best when we're consistently exposed to environments that model these new ways of being. So Magnetics Love School is structured as an ongoing support system for you. Two pathways to choose from, the mastermind pathway and the self-led pathway. The mastermind pathway is a high touch, high commitment, high proximity space. And this is ideal for you if (laughs) you are committed to the process of attracting a partner and building that healthy, fulfilling relationship. So this is high, high priority for you. In the mastermind pathway, you are joining a cohort of peers. And honestly, I think that's the best part. We are a really tight-knit community, super supportive. We have lots of fun, lots of inside jokes, and there's just so much value in doing this alongside others who are doing it as well in terms of accountability, in terms of just learning at an exponentiated speed in that other people are going to bring in real life examples. You're going to come to understand some best practices for navigating the situations that they're in that you may be in in the future. So this amplifies your understanding, your integration, and the implementation of the concepts that we work with inside of Magnetics. And you also get to receive feedback from multiple perspectives, multiple sources, not just from me, but also from your peers. So that's super valuable as well. Not to mention that bringing a social aspect to learning makes it more engaging, more fun, and enhances our retention. So in the mastermind pathway, you join the mastermind cohort. You receive full access to the Magnetics Love School library, which I'll get into in a moment what's in that. But basically, it's my entire body of work around love life. As a mastermind member, you receive access to the full content library to go through at your own pace. And then you also receive access to weekly coaching calls, weekly mastermind calls, which take place every Sunday from 11 to 12 PST. So those calls are for real-time guidance, direction, coaching through whatever is coming up for you, whatever's happening in your life. Those calls are really where the magic happens. And when you sign up for the Mastermind Pathway, you also get a 90-minute private welcome call with me where we dive deep into where you're at, your patterns, your love life goals, and we develop a customized strategy to help you reach those goals. That's the Mastermind Pathway. The self-led pathway is ideal for you if you prefer a self-directed, self-paced journey and you want to tap into the Magnetics Love School library, all of the teachings in there, and implement it on your own schedule. So what's included in the self-led pathway is access to the entire Magnetics Love School library. So you can essentially view this as you're renting the library. So what is inside the content library, the Magnetics Love School library? In there, there are currently nine different courses and classes for you to plug into. Uh, I have been recording these over the last several years. This is a choose your own adventure, transformative love journey. In there, you're going to get insights and guidance for every step of the way of initiating, attracting, developing, sustaining, and deepening a romantic relationship. There is the Love Life Accelerator. This is 15 modules. This is the core curriculum for Magnetics Love School. This is exclusively available inside of Magnetics Love School. And this takes you on the journey, like the sequential journey of really just rebooting your entire understanding and orientation towards relationships and getting an understanding of the different steps of what's happening and what we want to optimize for in every stage of a developing relationship. You have Flirt Harder in there, which is my best-selling flirting school. This is eight modules on mastering the art of creating attraction. We've got Social Sphere, which is brand new. This is nine modules and this is all about expanding your social circle and fortifying friendship and belonging in adulthood which actually is also the best way to meet a partner best way to meet someone is through people 
And as we discussed today, like contributes when we have solid friendships, that actually bolsters the health and our satisfaction in our romantic relationship. We've got the approach. This is seven modules. This is all about romantic initiation. This is designed for men, although I would say there's a lot in there for women as well. And it is all about how to meet women in person and how to open a conversation, build a connection, and ultimately translate that initial encounter into a first date. We've got Intimacy Light, which is your guide to navigating casual dating, dating multiple people with integrity, meaning, and fun. We've got Approachable, which is for women to become magnetic and receptive to spontaneous acts of chivalry. We've got The Spark, which is all about how to continuously stoke the flames of attraction in a committed relationship. We've got Romance Rewired, which is all about how to upgrade your point of attraction, shift out of unfulfilling or dysfunctional relationship and dating patterns and into healthier patterns and dynamics that are functional and fulfilling. And we've got the manual, which is for women to heal their relationship with men and ultimately come to understand how to relate to men better. And it's not what Cosmo told you, (laughs) but ultimately how to be in relationship with men in a way that brings out the best in him and brings out the best in you. So that's what's in the library. I do not know of any other space as holistic and deep as Magnetics Love School when it term- when it comes to relationship transformation and education. And it would be my absolute pleasure to have you in there. So those are your two pathways, mastermind pathway, self-led pathway. Details full logistics and the investment that goes with that are all are all linked in the show description. So you can dive immediately into the self-led pathway. And if you do want to join the mastermind pathway, the way to move forward on that is to book a interview with me. So that is a, a conversation where we will make sure this is a mutual match, that this is the right space for you, and we'll take it from there. All right, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode. And I would love to hear from you. What resonated for you? What were your main takeaways from this episode? Any questions about joining Magnetics Love School? Whatever it is, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram so we can be connected. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.